So after reading the latest complaint about my atrocious Chinese pronunciations, I decided that we can spend a little time away from history. And here we're going to have some fun with the Chinese language and drive all of you haters crazy with some more badly done pronunciations of Chinese words. In this video, we're going to look at different types of English loan words within the Mandarin Chinese language. And if you do not want to deal with that, then the exit's that way, buddy. So English and Chinese are languages that belong to two broadly different families. English is a Germanic language within the Indo-European family, and Mandarin Chinese is within the Sino-Tibetan family. English is the most widely spoken language in the world today, while Mandarin has the most native speakers. Um, in addition, the written languages are vastly different. Chinese uses pictographic characters for its languages, whereupon each character represents a thing or a concept. Uh, so, in this case, you have the history of egg, for example. English, on the other hand, uses an alphabetical writing system in which the letters represent sounds, for the most part. Um, at the same time, English loves to borrow from other languages. It is said that nearly half of its words have come from foreign languages, and it's the way of writing makes it particularly easy when the language that you're borrowing from hails from the same Indo-European family tree, meaning that they all share a kind of a very similar alphabet or alphabetical system. Mandarin Chinese, on the other hand, is the opposite. In a study of 41 languages, Chinese ranked dead last in word borrowing from other languages. But at the same time, you kind of have to borrow. Borrowing phrases is the way in which one culture takes input and actually conducts exchange. So, uh, so even Mandarin, which is one of the oldest languages in the world, can adapt. So here we're going to look at the two broad categorizations in which this is done, as well as the reasons why the users, uh, the speakers of Chinese languages, used it in this way. So the first way we're going to look at is transliteration. And a transliteration is a word taken from English into Chinese through phonetics. These are relatively rare since the Chinese language phonetic structure restricts the ability to borrow words from English uh, in particular. Uh, let me explain why with this little brief interlude about the concept of morphemes. So in a language, you have something called a morpheme, which is the smallest grammatical unit that the language can have. Uh, it's different from a word because a word can stand by itself, though there are a lot of overlaps. For example, let's look at the word cats. Within the word cats, cat is a morpheme because it's a grammatical unit, the root of cats, and helps contribute to the understanding of the overall word grammatically. Um, there, there you go. In this case, uh, cat also happens to be a word. Uh, but the S in cats is also a morpheme. But unlike the root cat, it cannot stand by itself. So when you say S to someone, they have no clue what you're talking about. So Chinese is different because its morphemes are majority monosyllabic, which is represented by a symbol. Here, this one, or water, is a morpheme as well as a word represented by a single character, which, when read, represents the literal concept of water. Modern Chinese uh, so to, to kind of help you differentiate between the idea of morphemes and words, modern Chinese uh, actually illustrates this much better than English because a lot of modern Chinese words are dimorphemic, having two syllables, two morphemes. So a morpheme in Mandarin is almost always monosyllabic, and the longest possible structure for such a Mandarin morpheme is CGVN, where the C represents a consonant, the G a glide, V a vowel, N a nasal. Uh, the most obligatory component of the vowel is, is the vowel nucleus, which includes your tone. So the up tones, a downward tone, high tone, and forceful tone. One, two, three, four. So here is an example of a common Chinese surname of this structure. And um, it's very, I'm not going to bother to say it. Ask the native to say it for you. On the other hand, English allows for single syllable, wor syllable, syllable words that are as long as that. So the example is strengths. There's only one vowel in the whole thing. So uh, so now that you kind of understand the why it's difficult to do, to move English words to Chinese, let's go back to phon phonics. So transliteration is where Chinese characters are put together to create something that sort of sounds like the syllables of the English word is borrowed from. When you read the characters themselves, though, they literally make no sense. It can cause some issues for beginning learners of the language, especially if that learner is used to guessing the meaning of the character through its visual components and has not been instructed or is not aware that, you know, in order to understand what it actually means, you have to say it. So here's a few examples, and they're literal translations. So this is bus, uh, which literally means cling to scholar. Makes no sense. Uh, you have copy, which literally means, if you break down the words, 
the letters, it's beat shellfish. And then my one of my favorites, microphone, which I, when you break it up means wheat gram wind. Uh, so very confusing. These transliterations, transliterations, when they most often happen, they happen with proper names, such as England. Uh, America is also counted, but though, although it kind of has a, a secondary sort of angle, which um, actually a surprisingly lot of Chinese words have. So we can talk a little bit more about that later. The second way in which uh, Chinese borrows words from English is called a semantic loan slash translation. So for a number of reasons, these are words in which Chinese speakers translated the word through its existing components. So in this way, you're dealing with this issue, this difficulty where you cannot do a transliteration in a way that better conforms with how Mandarin speakers actually speak and read characters. It prevents confusion when someone reads hits upon that character in, in a sentence that has to be spoken loud, but when read makes no sense. There are two ways of dealing with this. You can create a translation where in which you take Chinese words with the literal meanings of the English word and smash them together like as if they were English. This is most common in music and politics. So you have this with rock and roll, where the literal meaning of the, the phrase is shake and roll. And I remember when I was a little kid and I was learning about these, and whenever I see one, I find them immensely ticklish. Uh, I don't know why, I still can't explain it. The second one is heavy metal, heavy metal music, which, if you translate the characters, literally mean heavy and metal. Um, and then the third one for an example from politics is globalization, which is, I think, uh, literally means globe, as in like a, a globe, and is Asian. Uh, the second way is a semantic loan, in which you are trying to reconstruct the idea of the English word, but with Chinese, uh, but not in a way where you're just translating the individual components. So let's look at ice cream, right? So ice cream does not, those characters do not literally mean ice and cream, right? They actually mean snow cake, which is similar in that it's the goal is to elicit the concept, the, the mental or uh, the, the, the idea in your head, like what you're looking for, which is ice cream, uh, a little snow cake. Uh, another one is laboratory, where you have, where it's translated as wash hand room, um, which the concept makes much more sense. You're not actually literally translating the, the individual parts, I guess in this case, the Latin parts of bathroom to wash hand room, uh, to ch the Chinese of bath plus room. So a lot of these, some of these happened within the May 4th movement in China during the 1920s, in which Chinese students demonstrated Beijing against Chinese reaction, China's reaction to the conditions imposed upon it by the Treaty of Versailles. During this period of time, China was trying to learn from the West and as such had to borrow words to explain Western concepts. Most of these words started out as transliterations, meaning like they're just trying to copy the sound. But over time, a few of these words have been modified, especially on the mainland, by the Communist Party to suit whatever needs. They've been modified um, to, to, to more from transliteration to a loan, a semantic loan. Uh, here's one from the 1920s, vitamin, uh, which is translated originally transported from in the 1920s as sustain his life, which is kind of a fun one because if you actually pronounce it, it sounds like vitamin. Um, my, my best pronunciation will be vitamin, uh, which is a cool example of hybrid loan. But it was changed 30 years later during the ideological remolding campaign on the mainland to this, uh, which now literally means life-sustaining substance, much more uh, indicative of what the actual meaning is and at the same time kind of going away from a uh, situation of trying to copy a Western word, which I think was a, was a priority for the mainland at that time, which explains why the mainland seems to prefer these semantic loans over a transliteration. Here's a few more examples. Uh, cement, which was at one point a, a transliteration, so you pronounce that as shaymenting, and then moved into this, which just literally means water mud, Here's another one, telephone, uh, which at the time was translated to, to something I won't try to pronounce, and then eventually became dianhua, which is electronic speech. Um, so moving on from that, so we talked a little bit about some of these, especially vitamin, right? Vitamin not only kind of sounds like vitamin, but at the same time, it has a, the actual literal meaning of the words kind of kind of is in line with what the word is. So it's kind of like a pun right? A Chinese version of a pun. These are called hybrid loans, and they're fun because they exhibit both a transliteration and a semantic loan feature. Here's one more example. Uh, a motorcycle, where 
the first two characters are used for the sound. It's the sound of the motorbike, and the second one is car. So, uh, so it in the same way you're kind of doing you're you're exhibiting some of the sound, the what the some of the aspects of it, but you're matching it with the uh, with a little word. So mixed loans are most common in advertising because they're really fun, they're really memorable, and you have a lot more freedom because you're dealing with proper nouns. Coca-Cola, right, uh, in this case, uh, roughly sounds like the word Coca-Cola, but it also literally translates in a rough way to good taste, happy. Uh, so you're, you're kind of conveying a positive feeling in addition to having that sort of audio uh, component as well. So I've stressed you enough with uh, with working through these particular concepts, but before we end it, you're probably thinking, like there are a lot of words in English, are there words from English from Chinese? Um, that's a lot of day, there are a few. They too also follow the transliteration and semantic loan pathway because it's, it's a two-way street, you know. English also has difficulty uh, speaking Chinese words, as you can obviously hear. A disputed example is uh, the phrase long time no see, which is kind of disputed because people can't decide whether or not it comes from the from Chinese or Native Americans. Um, another example, which is much has a much more uh, established source, is brainwashing, which is a semantic loan, which comes from a Buddhist Chinese phrase. Uh, in this case, they've literally taken the uh, uh, the concept of brain washing translated to English, and they smashed it together. Okay, here's one more. Uh, lose face, which comes from the Chinese word uh, dian, and seems to have been first recorded to been translated to English in the 1876. Funniest of all is that English users living in China then created the word, the phrase save face using a reversal, right? You lose face, you save face, right? Um, but this is a phrase that the Chinese actually don't really have, which I think is hilarious because um, sort of a kind of a um, I, I always I kind of like that that sort of uh, in that sort of connection there, which is super fun. So uh, thanks for watching, and um, hope you enjoyed it.